Super Duty service truck has had a little wax on, wax off action done on it. Got that done. But that's not what this is about. What this is about. Another log truck. Kenworth. She's a beast. Owner found some more cracks in the bunks. These things just get the tar beat out of them. There's cracking in here and in here. Right there. Another little trouble he's had. This picker sometimes, like if he, he wants it to ride like that. Where it's kind of sitting here in the center. It's heavy enough if it leans to one side, it'll lean the whole damn truck over. You know, noticeably like the weight of it will get you shifted, get you off balance. There's some cracks in this back here. Both sides, actually. And that's from sticking that thing there and it bouncing up and down. It'd be nicest if it was sitting in the center and there was something there that would keep it from falling. And it looks like um, it wouldn't hurt if there was something tying this into that to quit stop that from breaking when it's bouncing that pickers bouncing down on it, bearing on it, rolling down the road. So I'm gonna think about coming up with something there that would maybe help hold that in place a little bit without getting too elaborate. These things, you know, you gotta, you can't spend three days working on something like that. You know, the the customer, they can't, they can't justify doing that if, if, you know, if it's just something that holds something in place or just a few cracks. You gotta try to make sure what you're charging is worth what you're doing. But yeah, uh... Looks like the main boggle we got starting out here is um, the owner didn't get time to wash this thing. And it was really cold this morning too. So if you had washed it this morning, it would have not been fun. But it's warmed up quite a bit. Uh, so I'm going to get out the power wash and blast uh, enough of this mud off here that I can at least see what's cracked and what ain't. Washed on this with the power wash in all the normal spots where we see cracks. And the good news is I really didn't find any major cracks that we didn't know about before. But there are some whole bunch of small ones. That's that area there that we knew was really bad. It's got a lot of Got a lot of bubble gum on it. I saw this right here that I didn't notice before. The top of that. Just a little spot. I've seen, you know, if you look at about all of them, right here in the crook, you can see I welded this probably a year ago. I don't know when. Uh, I see cracks at the bottom at the bottom of that. I see cracks in the flat right there A little bit here metal fatigue That's a spot I welded on I don't know how long ago, but Lots of spots I see where other people have welded and 
places where I've welded. I don't know if I've, I've I know I've told my metal fatigue story a whole bunch of times to a whole bunch of people. I don't know if I ever had it on my channel, but the way I sort of, the way I describe metal fatigue, it's just like uh, you talk to somebody that's got something that's broke, and they'll say, uh, why did that break? That ain't strong enough. And this is, you know, something that's several years old. They, they say, why did that break? Why isn't it strong enough? There is such thing as metal fatigue. A uh, piece of steel of a certain strength in the past that's been in use and been working, it's not as strong as it was. And the way I describe metal fatigue is if you want to talk about some of the most resilient steel and the most elastic forgiving steel you can think of, I would say a 7018 welding rod. And to describe metal fatigue to you, even with a 7018 welding rod, if you take that welding rod and you take two pairs of pliers and you put a pair of pliers in each hand and grab that welding rod, you can bend that welding rod until both ends point the same direction. And that rod will look fine. It'll bend to complete 180 degrees and it's fine. And you can hold on to them pliers and you can twist that rod back the other direction and bend it another full 180 degrees to where both ends of that thing are bent in the absolute opposite direction from where you bent it the first time and it'll probably still be perfectly fine. But, if you get a good grip on them pliers and you just keep wrenching on it and keep doing it and keep doing it with both sets of pliers bending back and forth, back and forth, you know where I'm going with this, you know what's going to happen, the rod's going to break. That's metal fatigue. And that happens to all of these things that work. Over time, no matter how strong you make it, if there's a spot that you continue to work, continue to work, continue to work, back and forth, back and forth, it's going to break. You'll notice a lot of times on these welds, like on this bunk on this log truck, like once I weld a crack up, I weld a whole bunch over top of it. Sometimes a huge weld. You know, you got a crack that's, this crack is like the thickness of the edge of a razor blade. But I'm welding on it as wide as my thumb or more. Well, what I'm doing is I'm not only welding up the crack, but I'm welding over the steel around that area because I know that all the steel in that area has suffered from that metal fatigue. You can help that situation by adding plate, you know. Maybe you can weld a plate on there. In the situation with this truck right now, if I was going to start putting plates on there, I'd have to make a bunch of them and they'd be a bunch of different kinds of plates. Because we got a bunch of little tiny cracks in different areas. So what I'm probably going to do is just weld over the cracks. It'll break again, but it won't be cracked. And it'll probably not be cracked for some time. Get a bunch of loads of logs in. Another thing what I'm looking at on this. Uh, doing something on the back of it. To help hold that picker in place. I realized that I'd like to have that picker centered up and in the right place. While I'm looking at that and thinking about what to do. And I was going to try and fire that truck up and kick into PTO and shift that thing around but i realize that i'm not really going to be tape measure precise of where it's positioned if i'm sitting up there in the chair running hydraulics on this picker so look here you see what i'm thinking instead of trying to center this thing up from the chair up there i think i'm just going to use this come along and try to Pull it over a little, measure, pull it over, measure, you know, get it, I'll get it in the middle that way and 
be interesting to see if that come along strong enough to slide that a little bit so that's what I'm gonna try as soon as I started trying to pull on that where I had that strap right there the whole thing was trying to lean over and I remember Ed telling me this thing wanted to lean over that way it always wants to go towards the drinker side of this truck so I moved my strap down a little bit lower I'm gonna try and pull right there and I put I got the shyster and I put the shyster I put the forks of the shyster up against that so I'm gonna try it like that I got that centered up there better and I I've, I've been looking at it here for a minute and uh, I'm, I'm not crazy about any of the ideas that I'm coming up with to try to hold this here the way it is and what I'm wondering is really I'm wondering uh, there's plenty of room back in here for this piece Without hitting anything back here I'm wondering like what if it was opened all the way up And set down over all that You know, maybe I could run something flat like this I can't do that with that there, but if this was under that I-beam Maybe if that was under that I-beam, I could do that like I'm wanting to. So I probably am going to have to fire the thing up. Because uh, i got to build up air to get the PTO to shift in. And um, it's going to take a little while, so we got to go ahead and get her started. And the way this, uh, way this Kenworth is, let me show you. See here, we got your key in the key niculator here, um, but we're not getting any action here. No action on that, which, you know, that could be a problem. But the thing is, like, you got to have the proper tool. Like I got right here, I got a Super Stark 1000. This is your basic Super Stark 1000. And if you got a, you know, you got a Cummins like this and you got a Super Stark 1000, what you do is just get up here like this. And there you go. So now we're building air. Well, the third axle's up off the ground, so we must have some air. I heard it pop off. We should be good. There's another another trick on this on this truck here. When you're kicking into PTO, you got to do. You got to do a special doozer, a special doozination technique elation on this truck right here. This is, this truck special. So what you do, you push in the clutch and you put her in gear. Right there, if I let out on the clutch a little bit. We're definitely in gear. Now, I just stopped that transmission, so if I kick in the PTO now, it'll go without hurting nothing. If you don't stop that transmission by putting it in gear before you kick in the PTO, we're in. If you don't stop that transmission by putting it in gear first, it can strip that gear down in there. And that'd be a bad cracker if you did something like that on, on a poor, poor old Kenworth. So we got her in now. 
I turned that thing around the other way. And I like it better like that. I've been, I've measured that part. The width of it is pretty consistent. So that's definitely a side that I might be able to grab a hold of with something that'll stop that thing from flopping back and forth. I don't know for sure, but I'm going to give it a shot. It's pretty consistently eight and an eighth inch wide and it, it's eight and an eighth no matter where you measure it here. Uh, I guess that's what it means to be consistent. Duh. <laughs> All right, so over there, I took a measurement of, well, I made a little mark in the center of the frame rail. And then I went out to uh, like nine and an eighth. Because this thing, you know, you, you got to have a little room in there. You can't make it impossible to get it down in there. I'm just hoping at nine and an eighth, if you set it down in there, It'll be a pocket that'll only allow it to tilt just a little one way or the other and not let it flop clear over is what I'm trying to imagine. And I'm thinking I got some six by six by half angle iron and what I really need is a three by six, but I can make three by six out of a half by six. But the reason I need three by six is I'm wanting three inches coming out here six inches coming down so it'll be like uh six inches this way three inches that way pressed against uh that claw that that grapple so i got that piece of angle iron out in a size i can handle here and got it up on the table and uh, marked it out to the length and then I marked my three inches from here to there. And obviously this piece I'm going to cut off will be scrap, but we can use that a little bit because I'm going to want a cap on the inside. So we cut them out of that scrap. And whenever you're cutting a, a cap for an angle iron or an I-beam, it's good to take a little notch out of this part. See how that's got a, radius to it right there if you cut that square it won't fit in there very good so we'll just when we when we do it it's nice if you do it while you're cutting it you know so to be done uh you go to fit it in later if you didn't notch it you'll be like ah shit now i gotta get you know grinder or torch or something and make your little notch but if you remember to do it when you're cutting it that'll be better so uh I'll burn this out with a hand torch. I might use a straight edge, but that's that's the plan on that.
cleaned them things up and just tacked them on there uh went ahead and welded that up where it was cracked because if i do weld that angle iron on there it'd be kind of in the way to fix some of that i did uh i weld that on the inside too where we won't be able to weld it later we can still take these off now i just got them tacked on there because i want to stick a grapple up there in place and take another look at it and that's why i got the truck fired up i got air built up <clears throat> remember what you got to do <clears throat> got to do special tricks for a special truck to get the special pto in gear you know i already used the super start 1000 there again got her going build up air so we got to do you can't leave the pto engaged on this thing you got to disengage it when you're done because the way this thing is you know if you was if you left the pto engaged and then you come back out here it ain't got no air and you start it when it builds air that air actuated pto would try to kick in and it would strip it we don't want to do that remember you got to do the special stuff to get this thing to get the pto kicked in you put the thing in gear and then you take it out then engage the pto and you test the grapple mount and that's what it's all about <clears throat> starting to get a little bit of a vision of what would hold this from falling sideways uh this grapple falling sideways angled you know that's what he's not liking because this thing's heavy enough when it falls to one side it kind of you know it lopsides the suspension on the truck even but uh looking at this angle iron here this this angle iron these two pieces of angle this would be the beginning of a wrench that like a wrench holds a nut like an open end wrench on a nut that that you know it keeps it from doing that that would be the beginning of it is those this this part right here and it's not super tight but i think it's tight enough and the next thing i'm seeing you know if i had something that could go down here all the way down like 17 inches down and weld the weld to that i beam right there that would grab a lot of surface down through there and and tie that i-beam and the and this these pieces of angle in together one problem i'm seeing when i put the grapple in this position though from up there from up there in the chair i can see that when when i start this down in in this fashion the fork side wants to go behind this i-beam i gotta fiddle with it to get it to come out here and when i'm doing that the back part of this thing hits this plate back here which i'm not crazy about it's not hurting nothing i haven't hit any airlines or anything back here you know uh, doing it it's it's hitting that but i don't want that to hit if there's something i can do to help it you know that's not a smooth place to slide anyway but what i'm realizing is if there was something if there was a slide made you know like right here from the end of this i-beam up where that forked part could hit right here and just slide down in there instead of them forks going in between here then that'd be more gooder So part of the idea of this ramp I'm thinking of where that fork section can slide down through here this ramp would go from somewhere on top of this beam here up to here all the way across this so when that fork section comes down here it'll slide. One of the problems would be if you hit this lower flange of the beam. Now we're going to be making this I'm making this beam so much stronger by plating across there and tying it into that bunk 
that probably the easiest thing to do just cut that flange right out of there and you can see where I've already done that and uh, by the way on that when you're torching something like this you know you got airbags and airlines and stuff behind there I I took a I got a scrap piece of metal that's always hanging around here that I would I stuck it up there and I used this first strip to to lean it up there and I was blowing my fire you know at that piece of metal instead of blowing it at them airbags and these airlines and stuff you're liable to burn something you know you're taking a risk when you work on something like this you might burn a wire you might burn an airline i'm just saying keep it in mind and you can do the best you can to keep that from happening um i think this ramp is going to be good to to cut out of this half inch plate i got out uh and those 17 inch pieces that are going to go from the angle iron down to the back side of that beam now they'll have to go on first or they'll be harder to weld because once that outer plate ramps on there that would be harder to weld so i'm going to put those on first i'm going to cut those out of a one by six one by six flat bar um so that's what that'll be part of the wrench that holds on you know to to that part of the grapple right there so uh Next thing, I guess I'll just set you up if you want to watch me burn this. All right, I got this tacked up over here for a test run. And the way this should do, the pickle fork side of this grapple is supposed to slide down this pickle fork slider. Of course, the other part will be on the inside in between these here patented pending anti-side flopperator brackets don't want none of this see is what I'm telling you all right
That wasn't hard for me to put in there at all. You can see how these plates got a hold of that to keep it from keep it from flopping. I'll try to stay out of your sunlight. But that was easy for me to put in there. And by the way, I got no seat time at all in one of these machines. So, you know, I'm I'm really cumbersome as far as operating. If I run one of these all day, I'd improve a lot. But that pickle fork deal slid right down over and went into here like I was thinking and see where that I-beam was having problems it was all beat up this I-beam was all beat up in here and it's got the welds are cracked that's because it's been trying to hold that thing up and it's not big enough to do that but see now we're, we're clear down here on this angle and this angle look at look at this thing i mean it's that angle iron is three quarters of an inch thick that's good stuff across there i, I think you know that's way better for holding that than than that little i-beam and i think you're getting more help up here holding it too by this and all this being tied together how strong that would be with these one inch bars they got a hold of that thing for you know a couple feet of that is being slid into that slot I just don't think that thing could flop around a whole lot one way or the other like that I'm going to weld it. You got to start and a stop with every weld. Uh, it's easy to make a start thick. It's very hard to make a stop thick enough. Especially when it's on the edge of something. I want to show you. Running some 532nd 7014s on this. That very last run right here. I started right there and I welded across now I knew that I didn't want to continue over to here because most likely when I got to the end right here if I would try and hold there and fill that up it'd fall right off this is a very uh, this is a for an all-position rod a 7014 is a pretty high deposit and they're pretty wet but this technique applies to everything what I've done is I've started here and I came to about right there somewhere in this area I lifted my rod and long arced came over here to the end and made a restart and then welded back and that right there is my crater where I pulled out right there that gives me the thick start here and the thick start there now I'm gonna do that again right here uh, I get a lot of comments of guys wanting arc shots, meaning they want to see the weld I'm making while I'm welding it. Uh, I don't have the equipment to do that worth a damn. I've tried to film welding. I've tried to put a lens over my phone and film welding. And I always respond and tell the guys, you know, I've never filmed welding where you could see what I was doing actually what's going on in the puddle good enough to even bother uploading it um and i imagine when i do this you probably just go see a blur but i'm hoping that you see me lift and at least see the change in position of rod um but if you watch weldingtipsandtricks.com uh and several others they have whatever it takes as far as their camera and their lens and whatnot to film welding in a way that you can see you can see what they're doing so i encourage you to watch that and hopefully it'll help um i make these videos with the old 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 uh, uh samsung phone that's in my pocket you know i uh i edit on samsung gallery on my phone i can't even operate a computer 
My wife's got a computer she uses for the business. I don't even know how to turn that thing on. You know, so, uh, anyways, here goes. I'm going to jam you up right here in between a, an airline and a hammer handle. And I'm going to do this right here. Five thirty two seventy fourteen rod. Left to right, right to left. I went from right here to here, long arc, turn my angle, come back. There you go. That's welded up. back in there I added a bracket right there going from the one inch plate to the I-beam I added a flat bar under there Going from the end of that one inch plate up to the I beam. I'm going to put that grapple back in the holder and that part of that's done. So somebody's pissed off because I, I throw socks in the dirty clothes. And somebody's in there sleeping. I didn't know you was in there. But you in the dirty clothes. Well, if I ain't supposed to throw my socks in there, then what the hell am I supposed to do with them, Miss Diane? Been welding cracks in this uh, log truck this morning. It was it wasn't light when I started, so I haven't filmed nothing. Uh, there was this cracking in these bunks that we saw. That's the bunk air that's got somebody put those flat bars on the side. Those flat bars should help a lot. But there was cracking and. Uh, did a bunch of welding there. There was cracking a little bit at the bottom here, remember. Um, did a bunch of welding there. Kind of welded in a gusset there. Let's 
something something notable on this uh on this grapple holder when this was squeezed up yesterday when it was squeezed up tight that piece was clear up there the grapple you know all the way squeezed in um so it's leaked off overnight that cylinder has moved in that piece has gone down and it's it's went till it could make contact with with the angle here that that part of the grapple was not setting on the angle when i had it tight there yesterday that's just that's what it did when it leaked off makes me wonder if that's going to hold there as good as i thought it was the way it is there when it's leaked off because of this uh down in here yesterday this was clear up inside of those flat bars which it's not anymore i don't know if that means that this thing is gonna be more likely to flop over on its side like we're not wanting it to do you still got this pickle fork part setting down on an angle really good and i think that gives it a bit of a base to keep it vertical and of course this right here you know, as, as on the other end, uh, this would not allow it to flop over. And i tell you what I'm going to do, just for fun, before I spend a lot of time trying to add any other metal to this, I'm going to take a shyster, and uh, I'm going to warm it up, and I'm going to run it over here, and I'm just going to push a little bit on that thing from the side and see if I can get it to flop over you know without doing anything crazy just shove on it a little bit and see what it does well that took a second took a few seconds longer than i thought i got the shaster out fired up i realized there's a bunch of pallets and metal i got out yesterday that i forgot to put away so i just put that stuff away and um I said, okay, then now we're ready to see what happens here. And uh, I ran out of propane. So I had to switch the propane tank. So now let's see what happens. Make contact there. I'm just gonna let it idle forward. I'm moving the whole truck, and that thing ain't falling over. Glad I did that because I was about to weld some more metal on there. To try and keep that from falling over that probably would have been a complete waste of the company's uh the customer's money if i'd have done that because <clears throat> if i can't push it over this forklift then i just i just don't think it's going to fall over that's good Notice this right off when Ed pulled in. That thing was sitting there doing that. It's gonna break clear off there if we don't do something. Uh, I can't do nothing about the chrome, but um, we gotta do something about trying to keep it on there. One thing at a time on something like this, obviously this is not right. This is pulled way out from where it should be back here. But I had to put a had to put a cutting wheel in here and make a little space 
and I've pulled that where it's it's good from right here down. I need to weld that together and then move to a next uh, next spot, you know, pull it and fix another bad area and then weld it. One step at a time. We'll get her. Got that where I can do something with it right there. Pulling back that way. We're pulled a little farther than we need to right now, but we could always push it back out or pull it back out. A little bit of extra water on the cardboard here. I'm going to zip that up. Got the bumper fixed and <clears throat> this thing uh i guess it tricked me i honestly thought uh that that was a chrome bumper i saw where it was broke i saw it was shiny on the outside i saw where it was broke uh the brake in inside was rusted uh you know iron colored brown rust and i thought that bumper was chrome I could tell when I welded on it with uh, I was doing some preliminary in the beginning welding I was running uh, a pipe rod on it a 532 5p plus and I could tell that rod was too brittle for this material it looked uh, this material looked hard when I welded it I uh, ended up welding over all that 5P with 7018 because I think this is some form of stainless. Uh, if you know more than I do about what, what they make these bumpers out of, let us know in the comments because uh, I think this is some form of stainless. It's obviously not a chrome because if it were chrome... You know, we'd see that chrome coating peeling off around there, you know, right away once you put the heat to it. And that didn't happen. But I think what I'm going to do, I got some clear enamel that I'm going to put on it. And I don't know. Uh, I just know that where I've welded on that, the heat and the weld not being stainless is going to rust. And, you know, maybe this clear enamel over the weld right there well uh it's not gonna look good it doesn't need to look good these things don't haul as much logs when they look good you know she got to be mean but i i don't want a big couple big brown spots right there right off the bat first thing tomorrow either uh so i'll hit it with some of that clear enamel i think the i think the grapple holder is good i'm i'm happy with that i think I pretty much took care of all the cracks I saw. Should be good for a while. Uh, these bunks have been welded on a lot, and obviously, you know, they're, they, they've they hauled some logs. Uh, so they've got a lot of metal fatigue in them. But all right, so that's it for this one. Y'all have a good one.